I learned that the lenticular lenses that I had used for quantum stealth to make things invisible also had a reflective issue which can be solved a number of ways such as with anti-reflective coatings. But then I wondered if I could utilize this issue for an advantage. As the lenticular lenses are polarized, could those lenticules be used to channel extra light onto the solar panel? Indeed it could, I discovered. I then decided to see if adding a mirror under the lens would boost the amount of light, and sure enough, it worked. By adding these lenticular mirror combinations on all four sides, I was able to more than triple the power output over the identical control panel on a thin film solar panel and nearly triple the output on a monocrystalline solar panel. Wouldn't mirrors work better? Mirrors are limited by both their vertical and horizontal angle, and as you can see from this video, the surface area of the three mirrors is not fully reflective at any one time, which can lead to specific hotspots on the panel that can damage it. The lenticular lenses over the mirrors provides a much greater reflective surface area, which more evenly distributes the extra reflected sunlight across the panel, vastly reducing the hotspot problem. I then found I could further increase the output and structural integrity by creating lenticular lens cylinders with a mirror inside which created a greater surface area within the same footprint as a flat sheet, and this would offer much better weather resistance against the wind and snow and self-cleaning when it rained. The final breakthrough came just a few weeks before the patent was due to be filed. I was experimenting with our laser scattering using diffraction grating and wondered if it might have an effect on my solar amplifier. Not only did we get another 9% more power with the diffraction grating over the lenticular lens, which was over the mirror, and this 9% was only using one lenticular sheet, as I only had a few pieces of double access diffraction grating to experiment with, it also occurred on December the 6th, where solar radiation is only about one third of what it is at the beginning of summer. Not only did I get an increase in power, but the double axis diffraction grating was equally reflective across 40 degrees to the right of center and 40 degrees to the left of center, equaling 80 degrees total, and about the same 80 degrees in the vertical angle as well, meaning that we may not have to track the sun with the solar panel to obtain the amplified output. Creating a solar panel amplifier is not new, but tripling the power output of a solar panel with an amplifier is new. It's supposed to be impossible, but as my father-in-law says, the impossible just takes a little longer. In 2015, MIT scientists published a scientific paper demonstrating a new three-dimensional solar panel tower configuration which could provide 2 to 20 times the power over a flat solar panel that used the same footprint. They estimate that converting flat panel solar farms to 3D solar towers should provide over 1 terawatt of power worldwide. Currently, in 2019, we're only producing about a half a terawatt of solar power, and in 2015, when they published the paper, globally, we were only at about a quarter of a terawatt. But there's a catch. They point out that the shadows created by a neighboring tower would remove the benefit, and thus the technology would be relegated to urban environments only, on the tops of buildings with one or two towers strategically placed so the shadows didn't cross one another. But what if you could reduce or eliminate the shadow? When I first began to test solar panels with lenticular lens material in 2013, it was all about removing shadows and not about boosting output. Even a small shadow can reduce the output by 86 to 91 percent or one-tenth of the power that the panel is supposed to be producing. Our material in the first experiment was able to boost it from 1.8 watts without the material to 15.2 watts with the lens, which is about 64% of the control panel output. In the next experiment, I placed a second piece on the ground in front of the panel. This further boosted the output to 83% that of the control panel. While I don't show it here, I was able to hold another piece over top of the panel to completely remove the effect of the shadow, getting it to about 104% that of the control panel. In 2018, in preparation for the non-provisional patent application, I tried something a little different. If you've seen the last video, you know I was able to triple the solar panel output by placing the lenses on top of mirrors on all four sides of the solar panel, reflecting extra sunlight onto the panel. 
Here we can see that the shadow causes a 91% reduction of power. Adding a mirror had very little effect and no effect on the amperage. Adding a lenticular lens almost doubled the amperage. Adding a mirror under the lenticular lens tripled the amperage and adding the same configuration vertically on either side actually produced more power than the control panel, 69.9% more power. When I removed the tube causing the shadow, this configuration actually produced 143% more power, which is 2.43 times higher than the control panel. Within the patent, I've allowed for adding a reflective coating to the surface of the lenticular lens, reducing the mirror and lens assembly to one single piece. We know that we can improve output with the lenticular lens cylinders, and we know that adding diffraction grating also increases the power output and increases the angles that the sun is able to reflect onto the panel. I'm not reinventing the solar panel. I'll leave that to the people smarter than me, like the researchers at MIT but I can solve their problem to neutralize the shadows that killed their dreams of terawatt solar production. And I think with our latest additions, we can give that number a substantial boost. Spacecraft need to have coatings, covers, or tiles that are white, gray, or black to control the heating issues in space. Even spy satellites or spy spacecraft require these colors, which makes it easy to see them from the ground and know when they're watching, until our quantum stealth light bending material came along. What do solar panels, spacecraft, and quantum stealth have to do with each other? Heat and light. The more light provided, the more heat produced. Mirrors are used in solar thermal energy systems to reflect sunlight onto a central tower to produce steam to generate power from steam turbines. The mirrors are placed in very specific configurations to avoid shadows from surrounding mirrors. The world's largest solar thermal farm, just completed a few years ago in the Mojave Desert, Ivanpah Solar Electric Generating System, has 1,700 mirrors, each measuring 70 square feet, placed across 3,500 acres to power 140,000 California homes. The three towers are filled with water and the mirrors reflect sunlight onto the towers, raising the temperature to more than 1,000 degrees Fahrenheit, turning the water into steam that spins the turbines. Cost to construct the system was $2.2 billion, but using sunlight instead of fossil fuels will reduce carbon emissions by more than 400,000 tons annually. In our last video, I showed how our material could not only reduce shadows, but completely remove them. And these acres of mirrors are not fully utilizing all the space due to the shadows that they cast. The simple addition of three lenticular lens sheets placed over mirrors was conducted on November 2nd, 2018 at 1040 in the morning. The amplified panel produced 86 and a half watts, whereas the control panel only produced 58 and a quarter watts, which is 28 and a quarter watts greater output, or 48% more power. Solar panel manufacturers determine the maximum output by simulating the sun at noon at the equator on a clear day. The solar radiation available in this scenario is 1,000 watts per meter squared. When I tested these panels in Maple Ridge, the sun was only at an altitude of 19 degrees high, and the solar radiation readings from the University of British Columbia indicate it was only 250 to 300 watts per meter squared. Our amplified panel produced 23.71% more power than the maximum achievable at the equator on a clear day at noon yet we had less than one third of the solar radiation to work with. In the next example, I added the side lenses and mirrors and achieved 49.59 watts greater than the control panel. When compared to the manufacturer stated maximum, I was able to provide 38 and a half watts more than maximum, which is 52% more power than you can get under perfect conditions. Domestic water heating is estimated to be the second largest energy end use for Canadian households, accounting for approximately 22% of the total household energy consumption. The most efficient water heater temperature is typically around 145 degrees Fahrenheit. While the non-amplified panels don't reach this temperature, our amplified panels do, and then some. In some lesser quality solar panels, this heat can cause permanent damage. 
We can utilize the heat for thermal water applications, or we can try to reduce it. So I created a lenticular lens heat shield, and while it did cause a reduction in amplified output, it also reduced the heat by 30 degrees Fahrenheit when compared to the same amplified panel without the heat shield tested a few minutes later. Now we can compare the full effect of the heat shield and we see that it caused a loss of about 18% power over the non-heat shield amplified panel, but still retained 63% more power than the control panel. The two limiting factors for mirror boosters alone are hot spots and temperatures that can get too high. Could I limit the heat and spread the light across the panels with a lenticular lens heat shield? It accomplished both. The reduction in power was only 11%, but the reduction of heat was over 50 degrees Fahrenheit. So what works better, mirror boosters or lenticular lenses over mirrors? The best I could achieve with the mirror boosters was a doubling of the power. The best I could achieve in a similar configuration using lenticular lenses over the mirrors was nearly triple the output over the control panel. This means that the lenticular lenses over the mirrors provided 22 extra watts, which is 51% more power over the mirror boosters alone. Most of these examples are not practical for pre-existing solar panels that are connected together on a roof. There is a boundary around most panels in which we can place slat boosters. These are just small versions of the lenticular lens over the mirror. When I tested with them and without them, I was able to conclude that just the three slat boosters accounted for 16% more power, which is an extra 12.84 watts over the amplified panel with no slats. The boost from just these three slats allowed the panel to equal the maximum output under perfect conditions. In a place like Vancouver, where the solar radiation is half or less than half of the maximum most of the year, this could change everything for the solar industry. 